In a previous video, I showed how a species of beetle, Zephobus moria, commonly called superworms, and more specifically its larval worm stage, can not only survive on styrofoam, but can break it down as well, all in a couple days. I used about 30 worms that time to prove the concept, and over a week they converted a block of styrofoam into a husk and some beige powder. In theory, this powder is biodegradable and potentially even good for plants. Well, if I'm going to test the biodegradability and its interaction with plants, I'm going to need a lot more worms and a lot more poo. So, to do that, I first had to upgrade the enclosure, since a glass jar isn't really big enough, and it's hard to get the stuff out without totally emptying it. So I went to the local hardware store and picked up a pair of buckets, a lid, and some wire mesh screen. I cut a hole in the bottom of the first bucket and cut a piece of screen to fit over it. At first, I tried using silicon to attach it, but that didn't stick very well, so I ended up moving the mesh to the inside of the bucket and attaching it with hot glue. I also made a hole in the lid and added some more mesh. Now, the idea is to have the top bucket be the digestion chamber and the bottom to be the collection bucket. So to make this easy and to help me tidy up the lab a little bit, I got some plastic shelving that has nice holes in the shelves. I filled the bucket up with some chunks of styrofoam, and then all that was left was to add a few worms. The worms I'll be using, again, are called superworms, and you can get them at most pet stores. If you ask really nicely, they may even put a special order for you so that you can get, I don't know, about 2,000? Here's what the box of the first 1,000 look like. Oh, there it is. Mmm. Now, we close it up, load it onto the shelf, and wait. I'd use a spray bottle to mist it a bit with water just to keep them hydrated. After a day, there was a little bit of powder. And here's what I collected after just three weeks. And this is what I've collected after three months without that first batch. There's about three to four inches worth of poo in there. I've already had to refill the bucket two or three times so far. After the first time, I switched to feeding them packing peanuts, which they seem to like a lot more than the harder styrofoam blocks. So I've got all this powder now, I'm starting to work on actually putting it to use. Here are my first couple of experiments. This first one is simply powder added to water and left closed so that it's anaerobic. The liquid is a very dark brown, but it took a couple of days to get to this point. So it's clear that there's plenty of bacteria and also broken down organic matter in the water. This wouldn't happen with styrofoam, so it's clear that at least something is breaking down. Which I think is kind of cool. This second experiment is a little different. Rather than letting the bacteria at the raw powder, I added a little bit of powder to water again, just like last time, but this time I heated it up until it went a brown, almost black. Then I took a small piece of soil and used it to inoculate the solution, and after a couple of days, that brown-black solution goes almost totally clear in a, a light yellow. And you can see a little bit of sludge on the bottom. Now, that sludge is sort of akin to what you would find on the bottom of a lake. So it's clear that everything that was in there has overwhelmingly broken down. There is very little trace of styrofoam left there, since, remember, in the first experiment, it was floating at the top. So, it's clear that the stuff is breaking down, and it's clear that there's stuff in there. Now all that's left is to test how it interacts with plants. So, those are the experiments that I'm now working on. I'm starting to see which variations of this are the best for plants, which one do particular plants like. I'm also looking at doing aerobic treatments, so either leaving the cap open or bubbling through some air through it. And you'll see the results of all of those experiments in a future video. Okay guys, that's all I've got for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave me a comment with what treatments you think I should try and what plants I should test them out on. If you're interested in more content behind the scenes and more frequent updates, the Facebook page and Instagram and Twitter and all the other social media stuff is a place for that. All links in the description. And if you're interested in some of my research, my website is the place for that. Again, links in the description. If you haven't already, click in the top left to see my last video on decellularizing a liver. And I'll see you next time.